Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to be here in this beautiful city of Tokyo and to be part of this important summit. Let me start by acknowledging the work that you are doing, convening governments, industry, and civil society to address various space sustainability challenges and to find long-term solutions in a collaborative manner. As I think it's the first time that the ITU participates in this event, let me start by sharing with you some information about the International Telecommunication Union. The union was established in 1865, and it is the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technology. As you can see from the date, it's much older than the UN system. It's, in fact, the oldest intergovernmental organization in the world. Its membership comprises 193 member states and over 1,000 companies, including satellite operators, industry, as well as academia and international and regional organizations. By bringing together all these players, ITU provides a unique, trusted and global multi-stakeholder platform for the public and private sectors to address major ICT issues such as space sustainability. I would like to raise your attention to this unique feature of ITU among the UN agencies. Industry, the private sector, and academic institutions are not simply observers of the work of the ITU. They can submit proposals to the study group and working parties, including in the preparatory process of our treaty-making conferences. They can chair groups, and they can participate in discussions on output documents. While they obviously don't have the final decision-making power, which lies with the member states, these rights of engaging in our negotiations are very powerful, especially in ITU, where consensus is the usual way to approve documents and adopt decisions. In the field of outer space, the ITU is responsible for the global management of the radio frequency spectrum and satellite orbits. Our mission is to ensure these scarce resources are used rationally, efficiently, equitably, and also sustainably. To achieve this, the ITU revises an international treaty called the Radio Regulations and approves international standards on radio communication services that go from mobile to satellite services, including large constellations and communications beyond the Earth. Since the first space conference organized by ITU in 1963, the ITU has allocated frequency bands to space services and coordinating the, coordinated their use with other systems. Today, there are several thousands of satellites operating and many others are under coordination to be deployed in a newer future. And this actually works. 99.94% of the total spectrum being used by satellite systems was free from harmful interference in 2023. This achievement is only possible thanks to the formal coordination and recording procedures for space systems and earth stations contained in the radio regulations, as well as the collaborative effort of our member states. In the last decade, the ITU Radio Communication Bureau has received an ever-increasing number of filings for non-GSO systems, including satellite systems composed of hundreds of thousands of space stations and multiple configurations submitted for coordination and notification, and a continued and expanded launch and operation of non-geostationary satellites in outer space. To give you an idea, in 2016, we processed 56 requests of radio frequencies for non-GSO systems. In 2017, this number jumped to 159, and then it grew up to 377 in 2022. But in 2023, it skyrocketed to 569. While the massive deployment of satellites will certainly bring a promising future in terms of broadcasting connectivity from the space, monitoring our planet and bringing communications to the moon and beyond, it will also transform the current dynamics of space services into a more complex scenario that we need to take care of in a responsible and responsive manner. Towards this end, the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference held in 2022 adopted two resolutions, one on the sustainability of radio frequency spectrum and associated satellite orbit resources used by space services, and another on ITU's role in the implementation of the Space 2030 Agenda, Space as a Driver of Sustainable Development. 
Also, the ITU Radio Communication Assembly that was held last year adopted by consensus a resolution on activities related to the sustainable use of radio frequency spectrum and associated satellite orbit resources used by space services. Through these resolutions, our 193 member states decided that ITU, and more specifically its radio communication sector, will undertake a series of actions. The first action regards technical studies on the issue of the increasing use of radio frequency spectrum and associated orbit resources in no GSO orbits and the long-term sustainability of these resources with a focus on the prevention of harmful interference. The results of these studies will be submitted to the next World Radio Communication Conference, scheduled in 2027, for consideration and necessary action. The second action is to develop a handbook on best practices for the sustainable use of frequencies and associated non-GSO orbits by space radio communication services. This handbook, which is already in preparation, will contain individual experiences and guidelines adopted by member states and sector members. And the third action is the development of a new recommendation providing guidance on safe and efficient deorbit and disposal strategies and methodologies for non-GSO space stations involved in radio communication services after the end of their life. In connection with these actions, the ITU Radio Communication Bureau has issued a circular letter inviting administrations and all space stakeholders to submit their strategies for post-mission deorbiting or disposal of space stations using frequency assignments currently recorded in the ITU Master International Frequency Register and their coordination or notification processes. Moreover, the ITU created a space sustainability gateway that consolidates all the information received on this topic. I take this opportunity to invite you to visit this very useful website that will promote and share data on responsible behaviors in the operations of non-GSO systems. We believe that these three actions will be extremely valuable to all space actors, both experienced and newcomers, to prevent the growth of space debris and ensure the long-term sustainability of spectrum and orbit resources. The Radio Communication Bureau that I'm leading will assist our membership in delivering out these three actions. The last World uh, Radio Communication Conference held in 2023 allocated more spectrum to respond to the demand of mobility applications through non-GSO satellite systems of intersatellite links, as well as scientific applications connected to Earth observation. It has also set the limits of orbital tolerances applicable to large constellations. Looking into the future, the next World Radio Communication Conference, which will take place in 2027, will consider technical and regulatory measures for equitable access to portions of the 30 to 50 gigahertz frequency bands by fixed satellite service networks and systems. This new agenda item was developed considering the equal rights of all countries to use radio frequencies and satellite orbits for the various space radio communication services in accordance with the radio regulations. In addition, <coughs> sorry, WRC 27 will consider the development of lunar communications, which will define a framework for spectrum management that could be applied in the future in other planetary bodies. As you can see, many discussions that may initially seem focused on radio spectrum issues have intricate consequences on the sustainability of the use of the space resources. Dear colleagues, I can assure you that space sustainability is essential for the work of the ITU, to continue ensuring access and efficient use of the spectrum and associated orbital resources. We plan to conduct this work in line with our usual philosophy, to focus on practical, tangible achievements, even small, aiming at improving space sustainability through inclusive engagement of all relevant actors. Let me take this opportunity to invite you to the Space Sustainability Forum that will take place in Geneva on the 10th and 11th of September. The ITU will gather governments, satellite operators, space agencies, satellite industry, and civil society. And of course, you are more than welcome to join as well. Once again, let me thank you for your collaborative efforts and congratulate you once again for this successful summit. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>